Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. This is an update for the All Hazards Consortium, sensitive information sharing environment uh, where we share data across platforms so people can be on the same uh, map at the same time within the state emergency operation centers and the private sector owner operators who move things around the country and keep the economy moving and the lights on. Well, this is the look at the tropics. I've got the GOES satellite imagery up right now, and I've got the cursor around some showers and storms uh, that are developing there. Uh, nothing organized at all. Uh, National Hurricane Center still watching an area a little bit further uh, in the central part of the Caribbean in this area. I'll show you that on GeoCollaborate in just a second, uh, but we certainly don't have any threats of anything uh, tropical hitting the United States, uh, the mainland United States, over the next five days uh, for sure. Uh, down in Puerto Rico, we do have scattered showers and uh, storms, mainly just to the northwest of the island uh, where there are some heavier storms uh, that are forming there. Uh, doesn't look like anything is going to develop out of this area, uh, but the models do want to develop something in the next six, seven, ten days. Uh, again, keep pushing it out and out and out. I mentioned yesterday it's like putting that pot on the stove uh, and waiting for it to boil. Uh, it's just on warm right now, and you can see those warm temperatures in the sea surface uh, reflectance here. Uh, this is uh, from multiple satellites that are orbiting, polar orbiting satellites uh, that are taking sea surface temperature readings, putting them all together, and you can see the sea surface temperatures underneath what's going on here. I do want to point something out that's uh, fairly interesting. Yesterday I noticed this on the sea surface temperature anomaly data, but if I move over here, look at this here. Uh, this is uh, Oaxaca uh, State in uh, southern Mexico, and uh, you can see this cold water coming down and uh, it's really making these sea surface temperatures cool. Uh, the source uh, is several tropical systems that have moved through this area, dumping copious amounts of rain in the mountains. And all of that rain has to drain down the mountains into the valleys, out into what they have down here. Uh, they call uh, Lake Superior, actually. And, uh, and then it drains out into the Pacific Ocean. And you can actually see it reflected in the sea surface temperature data. Uh, pretty amazing what we can see. Now I'm just gonna go up uh, north a little bit to the east coast. Look at these clouds moving up and around. There is just a large high pressure system over the east coast. This is all low cloudiness here uh, that kind of uh, goes away with the afternoon sun. You can see it disappearing there. Kind of low fog, a stratus uh, type clouds uh, that form overnight when the dew point and the temperature get very close together. Uh, to form fog and low clouds. But look at this influence of the high pressure that's just circulating here, pushing all of the weather that wants to move eastward up into the Great Lakes area and up into Canada. However, we are watching uh, parts of the Midwest today, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, for potentially some severe thunderstorms. There is a risk of severe weather there. I'll take this full screen so you can see what's going on. Uh, meanwhile, you can see the Gulf Stream uh, heading up there and uh, cool water has returned uh, to the uh, beaches of the Mid-Atlantic and down towards the Outer Banks. Uh, but indeed, we are watching this area. That's gonna be the story over the next uh, 24 hours. A uh, severe weather outbreak possible uh, throughout Kansas, uh, southwestern, um, southwestern Iowa and southeastern Nebraska, uh, also in parts of Oklahoma, may see some severe weather there uh, during the day today. Let me show you GeoCollaborate and what that looks like. Uh, this is the area that the Hurricane Center is watching. Of course, two areas out here in the, uh, in the Pacific Ocean uh, that could form. And then over uh, in the Atlantic, uh, we're looking at uh, potential area of development. Still, uh, the Hurricane Center has this at 40% chance over the next seven days. <laughs> Nothing, 0% chance over the next two days. Notice how this keeps shifting eastward. It keeps shifting out, and uh, that's what we're uh, looking at uh, for uh, potential tropical development. And of course, when it does happen, uh, we'll be able to monitor it, not just from models picking it up in the short time frame, like two, three, four days ahead, uh, but they keep wanting to develop something out in the later parts of the model run, uh, which don't 
uh, provide me with a whole lot of confidence uh, that something's going to happen this week at all, even into the weekend, maybe pushed out even further. But the one thing that we do want to monitor, and that is the fact that the models, since they do want to develop something, and well, let me let me show you that right now. I'm going to show you the uh, global forecast system. Showed you this yesterday. Uh, this is from the Atlantic Oceanographic Marine Lab, the Hurricane Research Division. Uh, you can see uh, 91 out, 91E out here that's being monitored for potential development. Uh, that is one of the uh, X's that you saw out in the Pacific. Uh, but look at this high pressure that's just dominating uh, in the east uh, here. And I'm going to put this into motion just to let this play out. And um, you'll see some of the uh, flashes there. It's loading uh, the data. I thought I preloaded this, but um, uh, it's just flashing a little bit. Apologies for that. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop it here. Look, we're all the way out into Saturday morning, and we have some area of low pressure uh, that uh, this model, the GFS, wants to develop. Uh, but I'll take it out uh, further here uh, into the next couple of days. Uh, now we're out into uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning early, and there's just a broad area of low pressure uh, that is forming here. And uh, that's not really, it's going to give rain, looks like it would give rain to Hispaniola and also perhaps Puerto Rico, uh, eastern Cuba here. Uh, but there's no real uh, intense low pressure system uh, that is forming. And uh, that's what we're just going to keep an eye on. Now, as we get all the way out here, and look at this, by the way, this high pressure still dominating out in the uh, western Atlantic, uh, influencing the weather up and down the east coast. Many records set for lack of precipitation through the month of October. Uh, hardly a raindrop seen at all in uh, New York City. I think they had one uh, last night or the night before. Uh, just a trace of rain. That's going to go down as a record breaker. Philadelphia is going to have record-breaking dry weather in October. Uh, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, down towards uh, Raleigh and Atlanta. Uh, very, very dry weather. The last four weeks have been incredibly dry, uh, record-breaking dry, and so the drought uh, is continuing. Uh, but look, here we are out on uh, Monday night and still no real big low pressure system uh, developing, but I will take it out a little bit further. Uh, we're out at hour 144. Uh, that's uh, kind of fantasy land, and that is when the models start to develop something uh, out towards the Yucatan as it drifts uh, into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, but then kind of dissipates. But then later, uh, it develops something again in the Caribbean. So look at that. We're all the way out here, November 8th, Friday, a week from this coming Friday. Definitely fantasy land, but if the models are going to keep hinting at this, we're going to keep our eyes on it because we don't want anybody uh, to be unprepared for any type of of tropical development. Now, this is the European uh, model, and this is the integrated forecast system from the European uh, model, and uh, they have that high pressure system developing. Here, by the way, is that uh, potential severe weather outbreak. Uh, this is valid this afternoon, uh, so we could see that we'll see this low pressure system, uh, but we may see some storms develop along a line here in uh, Kansas and parts of Oklahoma. Uh, but I'll just keep taking this out into the future and see what the European model does. And it's pretty much nothing. It has a broad area of low pressure here, and we're out into uh, Sunday morning, very early Sunday morning. Uh, but I'll take it out even further. And uh, we're getting out towards, uh, this is our 138 uh, for the European model, and uh, really nothing. So uh, we'll be monitoring it. Hurricane Center has a 40% chance, and that's something that we will keep uh, watching. Uh, but I also want to go back to GeoCollaborate here because I do want to go up into the uh, mainland lower 48 and just show you uh, briefly. I'll turn on here and GeoCollaborate uh, what it looks like for the day one convective outlook. And this is from the uh, Storm Prediction Center uh, in Norman, Oklahoma. And you can see uh, this is a higher uh, likelihood of severe thunderstorms during the day today. Uh, and that extends down also into northern Texas. So uh, be keeping an eye out if you're watching from anywhere in this location, uh, Iowa, uh, Missouri, uh, 
uh, also uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. Be on the lookout for severe thunderstorms, and there could be some scattered tornadoes happening there as well. And so uh, we'll be uh, we'll be watching this. This is later this afternoon uh, into tonight. So uh, that's uh, going to be it for this uh, tropical update. Uh, I wanted to make this a little bit quicker. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. If anything develops, we'll certainly uh, come up with a special uh, video update. Uh, until then, uh, we'll be back tomorrow uh, with another one. Thanks so much for watching. Please watch out for yourself and also for your neighbors. We'll see you tomorrow.